Hello and welcome to another LeetCode problem. Today we're going to be doing problem number 23 of 5, distribution of cookies, and it's the problem of the day for July 1st. And so in this problem, you're given an array of cookies, and for every cookie, you have to give it to a child. And once all the cookies are distributed, you need to return the child with the maximum amount of cookies, and we need to return the distribution that minimizes that maximum. So for example, in this first example, you have cookies 8, 15, 10, 20 and 8 and you have two children so you're going to have two subarrays representing each child and so the best possible distribution is actually 8 15 8 for one child and 10 20 for the other child and they're, they're calling it the unfairness so here the total would be 31 and here the total would be 30 and if you have any other distribution the, the max total out of any of these two would be bigger and so that would be a worse solution so you're trying to minimize the max out of all the children, like one, once you get the cookies, you're trying to minimize this max. Okay. And so in the second example, it's showing that you can actually distribute the cookies such that you have three children, such that every child has seven cookies, and that's obviously going to be your max. You can like eyeball the max because like if the totals are all the same, that's clearly going to be the best solution, or if they're like one off or so. Okay. So how would we do this problem? Well, the first step is actually to notice this right here. And I think this is a big hint. So when you see these cookies length equals eight and the number of children is also really small, that means you're probably gonna be looking for an inefficient solution. And so in an inefficient solution, usually something like backtracking has like the worst time complexity out of everything. There's no memoization. It's pretty much just a brute force. And so that's something that we can do. And actually backtracking will work here. And if you think about what would be the time complexity for backtracking before we even started. So at every step, you're trying to distribute a cookie to every child, right? So the time complexity, you'd have to loop through the children every time. So it would be K to the N. And that wouldn't be so bad because K can only be uh, eight. So it'd be like eight to the eighth is like the biggest number you can possibly have, which wouldn't be so bad. And that's pretty much as good as you can get in this problem. Like as far as I know, there is no like greedy approach you can get. You basically have to try all combinations. But we do have some shortcuts, so we are going to have an optimization to get rid of the backtracking early, which is going to be nice, right, for just like having it pass on leak code because backtracking is so expensive. If we can have it pass early, uh, we should definitely do that. And so I'm going to discuss that first. So you're always given k is, if, the, if you see, k is less than or equal to the amount of cookies, okay? And so the optimization we're going to actually have is like, we're gonna have some cookies left over. So let's say we have two cookies left over. And we can actually keep track of how many children we have with no cookies. So let's just call that like starving children or something, ST. So if we have more starving children than cookies left over, because we're gonna have, you know, because K is less than or equal to the number of cookies, that means that if that's the case, that means that one child has to have multiple cookies. And so a better solution could have been to just, instead of giving that child multiple cookies, give that to one of the other children. So we should never have a solution where one child has no cookies because you're always gonna have a better solution than that. Like you can always just uh, give, you know, worst case scenario, you can give one child, like if one child has two cookies, it's always better to split those to a child that has no cookies, right? That would make sense. So that's going to be your optimization is we can just keep checking at every interval how many starving children we have and if we get a, and if we know we're going to get a solution where one child has no cookies we can just return before we do that now backtracking is pretty straightforward right so what are we going to actually going to do so we're going to have an array for the children so like for this first example we're going to have k it's going to be you know zero zero and then it's pretty straightforward what we need to do so we need to iterate through the cookies so we're, let's like if our cookies is 8, 15, we're just going to show you like a standard backtracking template. So standard backtracking template is you just add every iteration. So we're going to need an index and a starving children. Let's call that ST. And the index is going to be in the cookie array. At every single index, we just iterate through, through the children. And here's the steps we do. So we give a child a cookie. Then we check if that child was starving and decrement, uh, decrement ST if that was the case, right? Because then there's gonna be less starving children. Like if that child has zero cookies, then we're gonna decrement it because now he has one. Then we just 
go to next backtrack and then we reverse our steps. So pretty straightforward, like a backtrack is typically you do something, you call backtrack and then you reverse what you did. And we're gonna try to minimize our result. So we're gonna start with a result equals to infinity. And if we ever get, like I said, if we get this uh, ter early termination where we are gonna have a starving child, we can just return infinity straight away with, with, before, without backtracking anymore. Otherwise, we're just gonna try to do all possible backtracks and try to minimize the result. And then we can just return the minimized result. And so that's pretty much it um, for this problem. It's not super complicated, but we, let's code it up and let's go over the backtracking template. So the other thing for a backtracking template that you typically want is, especially if you have some kind of like end state and you're gonna be copying values over, is you wanna make your array of whatever you're gonna be modifying in the backtracking outside of the backtracking function, and then modify it in the backtracking function. And if you, let's say you're, there's a lot of problems like, you know, all kinds of combinations or something. In that case, you would make an array of like combinations here and then you would make a result array as well. And then what you can actually do is every time your combination is what you want, you can just append it to the result, right? But you're gonna wanna append the copy. But in this case, we don't have to worry about that because we just have the cookies. Okay, so first we're gonna make an array of children. So let's just say children equals, and we're gonna make an array of children and they are gonna be length K, right? Next thing, we're gonna have a starving children. Uh, starving children, which is going to be our early termination case. We're going to make that K to start off. Everyone has no cookies. Okay. And so then we're going to make our backtracking function. So def. Um, okay. Okay. So we're going to make our backtracking function. It's going to take pretty straightforward an index and a starving children. So we're going to pass that in. So yeah. We actually don't need to like make this variable. We can just pass it in when we call it. So let's just do that. Okay. So our first termination case is if we can't give a child to every cookie or a cookie to every child, right? So if starving children is greater than k minus index. So if you think about it, like if k is two here, if we're at index zero, how many more like how many more? Uh, or it's actually, sorry, it's not gonna be k minus index. So we do want one variable, so we want a variable like this. Cookies. There we go. So it's actually gonna be cookies. Yeah, so if let's say we have two cookies and we're at index zero, we have two total cookies. So then we'd have two minus zero and that's how many cookies we have left. So that makes sense. So the cookies, and if we're at index one and we have two cookies, then we have one cookie left. So if starving children is more than the cookies we have left, then pretty straightforward, we can just return infinity because we're trying to minimize our results. So that's gonna allow us to do that. Okay, now we have one more base case. So if index uh, equals cookies, which means we have no more cookies to give, then we're gonna return the maximum of the children array because that's what, like, once you get a distribution, you're gonna wanna get the maximum there. Okay, now we just simply have our result. We are gonna set it equal to infinity because we're trying to minimize that. Whenever you wanna minimize, you set it equal to infinity. Now we have to loop through every single uh, child and try to give it the cookie we're on. So that's pretty straightforward. So like for a child in range length children. Yeah. So if ch children child is zero, that means we have a starving child that is no longer gonna be starving. So we need to we need to make that smaller. So starving children minus equals one. Okay. Now we need to give the cookie to the child regardless, right? So that's gonna be children child plus equals cookies at the index. Now we call our backtrack function. So this is a standard backtracking template, right? You do some stuff, you call backtrack at the next index and now we're starving children. And now you reverse your work after you call it the backtracking. So this is the reverse. So, so it's like if you do one, two backtrack, then you do two, one, you know, the reverse of two and one and then, and then you do the rest of your code. So this is just gonna be the reverse because it's a backtrack. So it's subtract. And we do this again. So now if our child has zero for his number, 
That means he had cookies, now he doesn't, so we need to increase the number of starving children. So we just do that loop through every single child. Now we finally return the result. Oh, we, uh, I missed one more thing. So we need, we're trying to minimize the result here, so we need to actually use this value, right? So we're gonna try to minimize the result here. Okay, now that we did that, return the result. And finally, we have to actually call our backtracking function. So we need to return backtrack at index. We're starting at index zero and our starving children starts with K. Every child has no cookies. Okay, let's see how many things we screwed up. A lot. Uh, this should be minus, wait, 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 wait. For child in length, length children, children, child, cookies index. Uh, let's think about that. So we're out of bounds somewhere. Let's figure out where we're out of bounds. Okay, so we are out of bounds. Uh, I think we're out of bounds on this cookie side. Let's figure out why that is. So if index equals cookies, then we return. So how would we add a bounds? Um, <laughs> uh, this should be, yeah, this should be plus one. Okay, nice. Only one mistake, could be worse. Okay, so we have a pretty efficient solution. Let's talk about the time and space here. So like I said, um, so t I guess you could end early, but worst case scenario, you can't. And so worst case scenario, what are we doing? Well, at every iteration, we have to go through every chill, every child, right? So it's k to the n. So for every cookie, we have to go through every child. And so we have k cookies, so it's going to be k to the n. Because k is the number of children and n is the number of cookies. So that's going to be the time. Now for the space. So what did we actually make? We made a children array. So that's going to be space k. And then we also have to take note of the recursion in the backtrack algorithm. And the maximum recursion in the backtrack algorithm is going to be n. But the space is going to be really small. Well, assuming all these operations are O of 1, which, like, like just going through this code once is O of 1, which is kind of true because K and N are only, like, 8. So technically, you could argue, if you wanted to, that this was constant time, just because these these um, parameters are so small. But yeah, so we have K children here, and then our maximum recursion can be, we just recurse down through every cookie that's as far as it gets, so it would be cookies levels deep. Okay, so that's going to be it for this problem. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.